Kyrie Irving wears the pro version right here, but let's see how it performs and how it compares to the regular version. What's up and welcome back to another Wear Testers performance review. My name is Alan and today we're taking a look at the Anta Shockwave 5. We've got the pro version and the regular version. Kyrie Irving has now moved from Nike to Anta. He'll eventually have his own signature shoe with them, but in the meantime, while that is being developed, he has been wearing the pro version of the Anta Shockwave 5. Both versions are very solid. I don't think there's a wrong choice. The regular version isn't an automatic downgrade. What it's really gonna come down to is how you want your shoe to fit you and also where you play. If you play outdoors and you want the rubber outsole to last longer, I think the regular version is the better option. The outsole for both shoes have a very similar traction pattern. They both have these triangular nubs that are pretty much scattered throughout. It pretty much emulates herringbone traction pattern, which is the most reliable traction pattern. When you feel the outsole on hand and you compare both, the regular version is slightly tougher. So that's why I think the regular version is better suited for outdoor play. But that doesn't mean that you can't play with it indoors because when I played with both shoes, traction performance was excellent for me for both versions, whether I played indoors or outdoors. If I was really nitpicking, I think that the regular version handled dust much better because I found myself wiping less with the regular version than the pro version. The medial side of both shoes are very rounded and what's even better is that the outsole extends on both medial sides of the shoe. The outsole extends a bit more in the toe area of the regular version than it does in the pro version. If you are a toe dragger or if you like to touch off the ground with your toe, then you will find these very useful. When you're just standing with the shoes, the medial sides won't touch the ground by default. The rounded medial side really encourages you to change direction aggressively. And when you're playing, you'll most likely find your feet in a weird direction. So that's when the rounded shape really comes into play. Both shoes also have an outrigger. So Having that outrigger is good, especially for this shoe because it counters that rounded side by having this lateral side be flat and stable. The cushion setup generally felt the same for both versions. They both contain a nitrogen infused foam called Nitro Edge. The only difference between the two cushion setups is that the bottom loaded torsional plate in the regular version it's plastic, while the bottom loaded torsional plate in the pro version is carbon fiber. Both versions have the same top loaded plate. They're both carbon fiber. If you had a spectrum of bouncy cushion setup and a firm cushion setup, I would put the cushion setup of these shoes somewhere right in the middle. You do have a thick enough slab of cushion under your feet where it will give you a good amount of impact protection and bounce, but it's not a super plush type of cushion. If you want a cushion that is responsive in the sense that you won't have to sink in your feet when you're making moves, then this is the type of uh, cushion for you. What's stabilizing that cushion is that double torsional support system. You have those two bottom loaded torsional plates and then you have that top loaded carbon fiber plate. In addition, you also have some caging on the lateral sides of the shoe. The torsional pieces are also there for extra propulsion. When you're putting force into it, you're gonna get a little bit of a spring back effect. You get what you put into it. So if you put a lot of force into your step, you're gonna feel that Nitro Edge cushion compressing a bit more. I am a light person, so maybe that's why it felt like the cushion setup was more on the firmer side. There were some points when I was playing where I landed pretty hard and I really felt the Nitro Edge cushion compressing a bit more. I can imagine that for heavier and stronger players, they will appreciate that Nitro Edge cushion. The pro version has a slightly softer step in comfort, but a large part of that is because of the insole. The insole for the pro version is thicker and it also has this plastic piece that wraps around the heel area to give it rigidity. The good news is that you can take out uh, the insoles for whichever version that you get. So if you have your own orthotics, you can swap them in very easily. Over time, some insoles can wear out easily and they can start to move around inside the shoe. Having this part right here really helps with that. It does have this a sticky part right here in the forefoot area of the sock liner. For most people, I think going true to size will work. Just be cautious that the regular version will feel more snug because of the interior. The pro version, in my opinion, still fits well, but it will feel less restrictive than the regular version. The interior part of the pro version 
is thinner and it's not as thick as the mesh material inside the regular version. So that's why there's a bit more wiggle room inside the shoe. If you have wide feet, I would recommend to go up at least half a size for the regular version. Just be more cautious when you're sizing up with the pro version, just because of the smoother lining inside, as well as the shoe having more room compared to the regular version. Personally, I went up half a size from a true size for both shoes. I like to switch between wearing ankle braces and without ankle braces. It will be easier to wear the pro version with ankle braces because of the tongue. It is semi-gusseted. The regular version tongue is fully connected to the shoe. It's pretty much like a sock shoe. So once your feet is in the regular version, you're pretty much locked in. Even though the tongue on the pro version is not fully connected to the upper, it's not fully gusseted, it still has these two lace locks in here in the middle. It pretty much doesn't really move, so it's pretty locked in. As for the toe box of both shoes, they are more on the narrow side, but it wasn't to an extent that it was uncomfortable. It felt fine for me. What I find really cool about the heel cushion in these shoes is that it already has this predetermined V shape to them. That way the back part of your foot can really sink into the back part of the shoe, really allow the cushion on the sides to pinch your ankle better. In the pro version, the V shape doesn't work as well because the V-shape is not really as hallowed out in this part right here. I didn't experience heel slippage with either shoes, but I did feel like I was more locked in with the regular version. Both shoes have a plastic exterior, but the plastic exterior on the regular version feels a bit more plasticky. It's definitely not one of my favorite parts about the shoe. This pro version feels more malleable compared to the other one. There are less parts of the exterior where it is reinforced. It's just really this section right here. When I was first playing with the pro version, since this part right here is the only reinforced part, when I would bend my foot, I would really feel this part right here digging into my feet. Over time, it started to go away. I think it just needed time to break in. For this one right here, the regular version, I didn't have that problem maybe because the TPO overlay or that reinforced part isn't just isolated in one area. It kind of like runs you know, all the way throughout the shoe here. The toe part of the regular version bubbles up a bit that doesn't happen in the pro version the interior lining of the regular version is soft too but if you compare it to pro version this is i guess where you get that more premium feel just because the interior lining of the pro is very smooth and it's, it's very comfortable the regular version is heavier than the pro version the regular version will feel even heavier just because of all the added pressure that is on top of your foot in the regular version you have pieces right here that may rub against your ankle especially if you're someone who wears ankle socks in the pro version you have that cushion in between your foot and these parts right here so i don't think you're gonna have uncomfortable rubbing problems with your ankle and the shoe in the pro version. Both shoes have a tiny bit of forefoot flex, but there's not much flex in the middle for both shoes. So I know that's important for a lot of people, some torsional rigidity, so both shoes have that. The regular version's lacing system is very thorough. It even extends very close to forefoot area. I really like actually the regular version's laces. They are flat and they have a slightly elastic feel to them. They felt comfortable on foot even when I laced them uh, very tightly. What's interesting in the pro version is that half of it is internal and then half of it is external. I really did not feel any difference in how it felt. Maybe it helps contain my foot when I'm making really quick stops laterally. Maybe not noticing it is also a good thing. It just works seamlessly. The most important feature of the pro version, especially this colorway, is that it has these Velcro pins. That alone gives you plus 20 to all of your attributes. That is about it for my performance review of the Anta Shockwave 5 Pro and regular versions. If you can get them directly from Asia or if you are in Asia, prices are more reasonable. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Alan. Wear your shoes, have fun playing basketball out there, and I'll see you again on the next performance review.